The Messenger takes place in between two different time periods and you jump back and forth trying to figure out what exactly the message you're trying to deliver it is. Now that message is going to be delivered to three sages sitting upon a mountaintop. It requires you to travel through six different zones to find out how you will save the world. Now I know this sounds like a game you've never played before. Hell, this looks like a character you've never even used before. And my sarcasm is through the roof right now, as you can tell. In an interview with Omber Gaming, Terry Bullinger, the co-founder of Sabotage Studios, he mentioned that Ninja Gaiden and Strider and a lot of those games in a similar fashion held a special place in his heart, which is why he wanted to make a game that pays homage to him. He's, also, he was influenced by many other games that came out on the PS4 and in the computers as well, such as Shovel Knight and Guacamelee, which kind of turned the formula on its head when it came to platforming and harkening back to those retro days. And we got something now in The Messenger that finds a way to take normal side-scrolling 2D platforming where you get a power up here or there. And they added a skill tree and they added, you know, being able to purchase items in the shop that made up for shortcomings from games back in the day. Now this may or may not be a spoiler, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm not gonna say how it happens, but at a certain point in the game, you have the ability to go from 8-bit to 16-bit. And my goodness, this game is just sexy, how it looks and sounds. Rainbow Dragon Eyes composed this music of the soundtrack, and so how it just upgrades right away. And you go back and forth to further the progress of the game and even the development of the world you're living in itself and trying to save. It just made the, it just made it such an enjoyable experience. And for someone that wasn't raised in that time period, that I was able to enjoy it without the ball crushing difficulty of Ninja Gaiden and not really being able to take in what I was playing. Now for all you completionists out there, this game took me about 18 hours and like 49 minutes. It was right on the cusp of 19 hours. And oddly enough, you kind of get your $20 for 20 hours figure, if you're kind of thinking of it that way. Shouts out to Spool again. And to 100% it, it was not difficult. Uh, you get abilities, once again, I mentioned. Maybe I'll talk about it again. The abilities that you can get, it reminded me of Hollow Knight because there were shortcomings in the game, but you were able to purchase them and make up for it, if it bothered you, if it bothered you that much. Such as if you get hit in the air, you can push a button to recover in the air so you're not left falling to your death in a pit. Uh, you can buy an ability to see the time where time tears are. You can buy the ability to see where the green medallions are. And they just allow you to not depend on someone else or the gaming, the game's community as well to fully beat the game, which I appreciated because when I was playing it, there were no walkthroughs. I didn't think I was gonna go through all of the game and to get the 45 golden medallions to get the secret weapon at the end of the game. But lo and behold, it was pretty easy. It was fun too, because a lot of the areas, it requires you to be a damn ninja. And that's what is the fun part about cloud stepping and having the rope dart, not a grappling hook, a rope dart and the wingsuits, because I felt like I was a ninja more than this than a lot of other games I played. I was actually doing parkour techniques to get through the levels, and I wasn't going through each map or each screen a similar way. I would go through either on ground, or I'm like, okay, I want to hit an enemy, and twist, keep flying, twist, keep flying, use a rope dart, shoot across, hit an enemy, jump across again without touching the ground. It was up to my imagination. For those that don't like to just walk through levels or just want to sprint through games, this is a better Sonic game than any other Sonic games made. Forward momentum is key in this game for traversing up or down, underwater, anywhere, and they know how to keep it going by either putting a, a trap somewhere where you didn't expect it, but now you know how to go around it, a simple death, or enemy placement so you have the option of cloud stepping through them. It's all amazing. The mechanic, it's just, it's honestly just great fun when it comes down to it. And they figured out how to make it fluid and memorable. 
Now, the frustrations of the game came very far and few in between, because when you die, there's a little red thing. We'll just call him Benton, like Benton the butler. And when you die, he pops up and says, thank you for dying. You're adding a hefty amount of shards to my pocket. So then he appears next to you on your shoulder, and each time you collect money, let's say this is in my hand, this penny, he would take it instead until a certain amount of shards was collected and then he disappears. For someone trying to collect a lot of shards to get a couple upgrades in the beginning, it may seem frustrating. I understand that, you're trying to get stronger. But he also doesn't collect that many. And there are a lot of, there's huge chunks of rock that you can beat up to get a lot of shards to make up for that. And also if you wanna just test everything, you can just go to the bathroom and he'll get bored and leave. So if you're really trying to be stingy about how much money you have and you don't want him to get any, leave the game idle for like 30 seconds, go get a drink of water or something, go say hi to a family member, call your uncle or aunt or something, and he'll eventually disappear. And that's how they handle death, which in my way is very fun and quick and lets you get back to the game because there are a few sections that require you to have the proper timing or to use cloud stepping properly or to duck some gears that you have to play over and over again and the fact that it's a bill collector that doesn't really hinder you too much it was completely fine with me closing statements the messenger may seem like the perfect video game because once again i didn't have that many negatives to say about it maybe as other reviews in the past but if i had to say one big thing about it was it kind of uh it was hard to tell what areas you will jump down to make progress but once again the maps they will have blue doors of where you can access or you die and you go back to one of the many 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 checkpoints in this game that you don't really feel too punished for dying for just for exploring a little bit and i love the fact that i am playing an enemy version of hopscotch of just jumping through places or swinging through areas or just using my brain once again, which is video games with that. Yeah. I'm being rewarded for thinking outside the box of how I should traverse. And that's one of my favorite parts about this game. Along with the dialogue from all the characters in the game, even a staff. <laughs> I'm talking not the staff of a school, a rod, a wooden staff, even kept me on my ha-has and, and get my giggles a little bit. Cool part about this game is that the tone is set in the beginning and it's dark. It's pretty scary, but it keeps itself light and that's nice. Because if it was really just, oh, this is happening, the messenger, you must save it, it'd be a, it would be a 10 hour game. But the fact that they would stretch it across with a, lot, a couple of twists, um, the fact that the sages are just as dumb as a hero is, and kind of like you are as well as a player, you're all trying to figure out what's happening and you figure out together, it makes the ending kind of abrupt, it makes it even funnier at the end, and gives you hope for a sequel maybe. So I gave this game, I don't give a score, I say just buy it. It's gonna get cheaper along the way, just buy it, play it, it's worth it. And that's been the inputs on The Messenger. It's a spider! <laughs>